Welcome back to the sawmill again today guys. I'm here at the Woodland Mills HM126. I'm Chris and today we're going to be uh, doing a quick little project building a couple jigs that's gonna help out with some of those bigger logs and curve logs on the sawmill. Now for those of you that have been sawmilling for a while you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you that are just getting into it I'll just give you a brief explanation that um, you can see your log stops that your log sits against. The mill passes fairly close to those because this is supposed to be the edge of your log and it can cut from there all the way over to almost the other side of the track. Um, the issue that you'll sometimes run into is when you get um, a big log and when I say big um, it's relative to the size of your sawmill so if you have a HM122 a big log for that sawmill is you know probably somewhere in the 20 to 22 inch range where the 126 something approaching a 26 inch log and etc for the 130 something approaching a 30 inch log is what I mean by big and basically what happens some of the times once you get a big log on the mill is if it has some sort of curve or something like that in it it can actually stick out this way past these stops a little bit and then what will happen is the mill will come and start budding rubbing up into the log there and it won't let the mill pass through. Okay so when you run into the issue of your log sticking too far past your log stops and the mills bumping into it there's basically three solutions um, that are the most common that I've come across. The first one being if it's in a small area where it's like a bump out on the log or maybe it just sticks out right at the end. I've seen a lot of people, including myself, you could just fire up your chainsaw and cut that part of the log out. Um, so that's an easy way. The main detractor from doing that is let's suppose maybe that you want to make that log into some live edge slabs you might not want to cut that part off so that could be a reason why you don't want to do that um, another thing that i've seen people do is they'll and i've had this recommended to me i've used this quite a bit before too just stick a two by four or something up against your log stops and that'll actually hold the log out this way a bit more so that works great also and the third thing you can do is just to kind of reverse the way the log's oriented so the curve sticks this way and that might actually give your mill enough room to pass through it. Um, the one big downfall of doing that, especially with big logs, is once you have it on the mill, um, if you have nice big equipment that you can do it easily with, great. Um, if you're more into using cant hooks than that, you really have to be careful because especially with the curve in the log, when you're trying to rotate it this way you don't have any log stops so you really got to be careful that the log doesn't just come back at you and roll right off the mill on top of you so that's uh, kind of my big negative towards doing it that way and of course you could say oh, why didn't you just put it on the mill in the best oriented way possible sometimes that's easier said than done um, sometimes the log just kind of especially the bigger ones they want to sit how they want to sit sometimes and it's hard to get it lined up perfectly right off the bat. So anyways, now that we're done with that explanation, I'm going to build up a jig that is kind of in a similar idea to shimming it out with 2x4s, but I just wanted something a little bit more permanent, a little bit easier, and with some uh, different options so that it's nice and easy and I don't always have to go looking for different shim sizes and whatnot to get it shimmed out to the right spot. So because uh, this is a pretty small project, I didn't go make up any official plans or anything like that. I kind of just got them in my head. The first thing I'm gonna do is take one of these scrap boards that I keep around for little projects like this. And I know that I'm, for my personal plan, I'm gonna wanna rip this one down to six and a half inches. I think this is gonna work good for the size of trees I have here on the farm. So I'm gonna rip this down to six and a half inches and go from there. Alright, now the next step I'm going to do is take my skill saw here. I'm going to 
break this up into four eight inch blocks. Now when I'm done, you'll see, kind of see how this goes together. Um, for the size of logs I have, I'm thinking this is gonna be about the right height. This is my first trial run at building one of these jigs, so I'm pretty sure that's gonna work for me, but uh, when you see how it all works out, if you think a different length will work better for you, then that's up to you, but uh, I'm gonna do four eight inch blocks right now out of this. Now I'm taking some one inch lumber again and I'm gonna rip this down to an inch and five eighths. This measurement is fairly important to get quite accurate because uh, the jig that I'm building is going around the log stops. So you kind of want this to be just a hair bigger or the same size as the log stop. So you'll get kind of a good fit over top of them. Now I'll just repeat the process with this and I'm going to break this down into four eight inch pieces again. Okay and then lastly I'm just going to cut two four inch pieces. There, that should be all the material that I need and I can get go ahead and start putting this together. Okay guys, so I've cut up enough pieces to make two of these. That's what I'm gonna be predominantly using. I usually use two log stops. I know if you uh, cut really long lumber and have more bed extensions than I do, maybe you'd want a third one. But uh, for now I'm gonna do two and I'm only gonna show you building one. So I'm gonna use half of the material that we cut up, which is two of these, the biggest pieces, which are the six and a half by eight and a half by one inch thick. Then I'm gonna use two of these pieces we cut up, which are the uh, eight inch by one, one and five eighths by one inch, and then one of the smaller pieces, which is four inches long by inch and five eighths by one inch. So the first thing I'll do is take my tape measure and just hook it on widthwise like this, and I'm gonna mark it at three inches here, and then I'm going to mark it at four and five eighths. And these marks are fairly important. So again, three and then four and five eighths. And you really wanna make sure you have an inch and five eighths of space between the two lines. And then I'll just take my straight edge and mark that out. And then what I'm going to do is take one of these smaller pieces and you want to make sure that you're putting this on the outside of the line. So nothing should go in here because this is where your log stop's going to uh, sit. So on the underside, you want this on the outside of this line. So I'm going to nail that on now. Okay, and I think what I'm gonna do, just so I know I don't run into any errors, is I'm actually gonna take this right over to the mill and nail the next piece on now, just so I know I don't make any mistakes. All right, so I want this to go around the log stop like this. So the reason I brought this piece over was just so I could hold it here and get a nice snug fit with, whenever you don't have to rely on a, tape measure. Um, I like doing stuff like this just because you know it's going to fit like right down to the millimeter of where you want it. So I'm just going to hold that there and tack a couple of these nails in. And now I know I've got the perfect fit. 
Now before I stick the top on here, um, I'm just going to put one of my small blocks in here flush with uh, whatever your top's going to be. Um, they're kind of interchangeable so it doesn't really matter, but if this is your top here, I'm going to stick that on there and just uh, get a couple nails in it to hold it in place here. And this will just act as kind of like a little stopper. Then I've got some nails pre-started in this piece here because I almost forgot to put that little piece in there before I nailed this on. And I'm just going to, because I already know that these bottom parts are in the right place, I'm just going to measure and line the top up accordingly so it's the same as the piece on the underneath. And just nail the other side in and that'll be the first jig complete. All right guys, so there it is. I know it doesn't look like anything uh, spectacular. That wasn't the point of this. It's supposed to be simple and easy and save you some headaches. So I'm gonna put the other one together exactly the same way as I did this one. And then I'll meet you over at the mill and show you exactly how it works. Okay, so I thought I'd just do a quick tutorial here in case you are somebody who's new to the sawmilling and still not exactly sure what I'm talking about. Um, Unfortunately, these kind of things I find never show up good on camera, bends and stuff like this, but uh, if you can't tell, take my word for it, this log is pretty bent at the end. Now, I don't have any really big logs, which would emphasize the point any more, um, or more than this, but uh, this is what I got, so I'm just going to show you, like, this log wouldn't be a big deal if I was actually going to saw it, but... See how it kind of curves out at the end there and this part of the mill right here if it was down cutting through the log back somewhere around here right at the end of the log it would probably butt into the wood and then that would stop me from being able to pass through so um, obviously that's what I was talking about at the start of the video with your different options clearly if I just turned this log around the other way um, I have tons of room on this side of this log so um, that would probably be the easiest solution with a small log like this because I can just turn it by hand but a lot of the times with the really big logs it's not that simple so let me show you why I made these jigs up all right so if you've been sawmilling for a while uh, you probably exactly already know what I'm doing here and that but if not, um, let me just run you through how this is going to work and the different options that it'll give you. So if you put it on this way, your one inch board's kind of sitting right against the log stop in behind here, if that makes sense. So because this is a one inch board, it's going to uh, shim your log out one inch. Um, then because of the way I designed this, if you put it on this way, th these boards are sticking out two inches from the end of the log stop so that'll shim it out two inches and if you turn it around the other way that'll shim it out three inch and I know the first thing a lot of you might think is "Ooh, the metal log stops in behind here that's kind of risky business you might run into the log stop but if you think about it as long as you make sure you don't ever cut through your jig you'll be fine the log stops down four inches uh, even further down than this so that's kind of what I'm gonna keep in my head is just make sure I never actually cut through my jigs and then I'll be fine it kind of gives you um, a few different options and I've also put uh, that little stopper in here um, that's four inches long so um, you can kind of you know jack your log stop up or if you have the bigger log stops you can jack that up so that it'll kind of like sit on top of the log stop like that and uh, you know give you a little bit of adjustment up and down as well but um, that's basically all there is to this um, I might I can already tell this one's a little bit flimsy so I might put some heavier duty nails in it and stuff just to help keep it together better but uh, that's the concept anyways um, just so I have a couple of these um, ready to go and when you need 
to shim that log out towards the middle a bit more. I'll have something right here, one piece of wood that I can shim it out one inch, two inch, three inches kind of thing. And it gives me the options to do that. So um, just kind of a quick, easy jig that you could build so that uh, um, you have it on hand and when you run into that issue, as I know I do a lot with the cedar, um, some people maybe haul your forests are nice and perfectly straight, that'd be great, but I know for a lot of us we run into those curved logs all the time and it's usually not until you have it up here and set in place that you realize it, so I think having something like this on hand for those occasions is a good idea, it gives you a few different options of uh, uh, the distance you can shim it out all in one piece and then you're not trying to run around trying to find a little block of one inch lumber or two inch lumber and that even though you have uh, lots of it around the sawmill probably usually uh, just having one of these on hand isn't a bad idea either so anyways guys I just wanted to share that little project with you today um, I really appreciate you watching thanks a lot and I'll see you next time